Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the Bread and Burr YouTube channel. Today is another K-Series day. I didn't get that. Could you try again? Nonstop. She does that all the time. Today is another K-Engine day. Today is another K-Engine day. So what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be working on some accessory belt stuff. Um, I've got the parts laid out on the bench over here. If you hear panting in the background of the video, that is because of this unit right here. Right, Gracie? Yep. So here we have a pretty standard pile of parts, right? We have a starter. We have an idler pulley, an alternator, some spark plugs. This is where it's not so standard. We have a wide band knock sensor. Um, this is from WHP. And then we have another low dollar motorsports. Um, this is actually a map sensor, so it can do vacuum and um, pressure. And it just does one bar in either direction. So negative 14 to positive 14.7 PSI. Um, we'll explain that in a minute, but um, the reason I picked these, obviously this starter goes to this engine. That makes perfect sense. This is a CRV, um, basically power steering delete for when the CRVs went from hydraulic to electric power steering. The reason I picked this one is because I just knew that it has uh, seven ribs on this pulley. Then we've got the alternator for this engine, pretty standard there as well. This is just a uh, aftermarket, so nothing too special here. Um, we'll see if it even works. I just need an alternator to go for now. We may have to go bigger later because of all the pumps and fans I planned around on this car. These spark plugs right here, I believe, are what Humble Performance is recommending to run on your engine. So just a BKR9 EIX, and then you just go to Advance and ask for 2669s, and then they give you these. I think this is what they're telling me to run. Um, if not, I can change those out later. So don't take this as the Bible on what to do with these, because they may not be the right ones. However, if they are, I will update later. Low dollar motorsport sensor, kind of uh, already went over this. We'll show you how to put that in the engine later. And then this is basically a, a wide band knock sensor. Um, ECU Masters recommends this, so I will be using this on this engine because I plan to use all of ECU Masters stuff. And then we have a pile of belts, and I don't really want to talk about that. It has been a nightmare, but I finally figured out which belt to use that is in this pile, and I will show you why. Okay, so you can see pretty simple install here, just five bolts and then that stuff bolts on. Now, we've deleted the uh, AC compressor, so it used to come off of the crank, go around the AC compressor, and then around the water pump, up around the alternator, up to a power steering pulley, and then around the tensioner and back to the crank pulley. Well, <clears throat> in order to put the belt on here without the AC, we need to delete this area here, so we just come off the crank pulley and go straight around the water pump there on a 06 to 11 SI K20 engine, they have a smaller crank pulley. So you use a, I believe it's called a 5070505 belt, which a five is like the belt profile, the tooth profile. The seven is the number of ribs. And then the um, 505 is 50.5 inches. The belt doesn't work on here, it's too short. So, because that pulley is bigger. So what we need to do is find the proper belt. And I did. After going through all of these, I have a Fleet Runner, and I've got a couple D&D Power Drive belts, which these look like some crazy off-brand stuff, right? Like D&D Power. And then I've got the 49.5 inch belt that I tried that was a six rib, and none of these worked, but this one did. So what we're gonna do is toss this one on there now. What you're looking for, that indicator right there. Where are we at? There it is. Come on. Oh, there we go. So that little hash mark right there is right against the arrow. What I'm trying to do is get this um, like extruded area right here to be somewhere on that arrow. That's the band you want to be in right there. That'll keep good tension on it and uh, that will, you know, it won't be too tight. So anyway, we'll throw that on there and then we'll move on to the other couple components. <laughs> Okay, so pretty simple, pretty easy. Nothing touches, everything looks good. There's good tension, good wrap on the crank pulley. So this will be a actually pretty robust setup. Now you can see that little extruded area I was talking about is right on that arrow, it's dead center. There, now you can see it. Um, this is a 52 inch belt. If you just get on Amazon and you look up K520 or 520K, this is the exact belt that you're looking for. It means it's a 52.0 inch. It's a K profile, which is the um, number of, it's the rib profile, but I think K also means that it's a seven rib because you just look up 520K and that's what you're looking for. Doing some minor trailblazing here, if you will. 
we're just trying to keep things as Honda as possible and still make good power. Um, but there are some, some things that may need to change. So keep that in mind, you know, as, as I'm going through this, I realize some of this stuff may not work, um, but we're still going to try it um, because it's a stock engine and it was, you know, a couple hundred bucks. So it's, it's whatever, honestly. So starters on now, um, what we're going to do is get uh, into putting on the knock sensor. Actually, let's do this spark plugs. Let's do this spark plugs first. Okay, again, these are NGKRs. These are iridiums, which um, I've heard mixed reviews about running um, precious metal spark plugs in your uh, boosted application because it's tough to fire through anything that's not copper. Uh, but we'll see. Um, like I said, I'm pretty sure these are the one that Humble's recommending. I haven't been able to find clear statement in any of their videos. I know they've said it somewhere, so I'll find it eventually, and if these are wrong, I'll change them out. But anyway, these are the BKR9 EIX. And what we're gonna do now is just kind of pre-gap them to get them a little closer because they're like 35 thousandths right now or so. So what I'm gonna do is bring them down to 28 thousandths. And basically we're just gonna tap it on this little piece of steel here until I don't feel this feeler gauge wobble around in there anymore. And then we'll go ahead and set them in the engine to 20 foot pounds, which is just a little over the spec of 18. Make sure they stay nice and tight. And then we'll put the coil packs back in and bolt them down. So let's uh, go ahead and set this and throw them in the engine. All right, so the spark plugs are in. Again, gap to 28 thousandths of an inch, and they are torqued down to 22 foot-pounds, which is a little bit over spec, but it's gonna be pretty rough in there. So, should be just fine. So, spark plugs are done, serpentine belt's done. Now what we're gonna do is move on to the weird stuff. So, we'll do this last. We're gonna get to this. This is a WHP wideband knock sensor. Um, I believe these are called flat responses. Um, so you see I've got the connector and the pins and the uh, pin seals, uh, but what we're going to be doing is just mounting the knock sensor. Um, there's some special directions on how to do this, so we're going to walk through that now. All right, so the only things I want here are just these parts. These consist of the knock sensor itself, the mounting stud, and the nut. So basically what you do is you put the stud in first, then you put the knock sensor over it, and then you torque this nut down. And then these directions in here state specifically how to do that. Okay, so the factory knock sensor mounting position on this engine is right here. So what we're gonna do is take this stud and we're gonna start it in there all the way down by hand until it stops. That'll bottom it out on the block. That'll get as much contact between the stud and the block as possible. So now it's bottomed out. Now we need to do is put our sensor on. And I'm not sure if these are super sensitive, but I'm treating it like it is. I don't want to damage it. All right, so as you can see in there, very simple install. Start the stud by hand and then put the sensor on, orient it the way you want it, and then torque that nut down to 11 foot-pounds. I had to use an old-school torque wrench, and I went to 1.52 kilogram meters, right? So... Anyway, I need to straighten that out. That got bent. These are the finest aftermarket starters. Anyway, so now the next step is to move on to yet another experiment. So crankcase pressure is a very important part of boosting an engine. Um, you have to breathe out as much as you can. So what we got to do is eventually put some 10 AN ports on this valve cover and breathe that to a catch can. We'll get to that in probably the next video, but uh, what we're going to do to monitor that is we're going to put on a MAP sensor, which is just a vacuum and positive pressure capable sensor. So another low dollar motorsports sensor is going to go on this thing and it's going to go on where the factory PCV went because we no longer need a PCV. So let's go ahead and explain how that works. So as you can see, I have my low dollar motorsports sensor here. Again, a very nice quality stainless steel sensor. Really impressed with these. I hope they work as good as they look. I'm sure they do because a lot of people use them. But anyway, you can see it is in this crappy Amazon uh, stainless steel, um, basically 10, 14 by 150 nut. Now, this has a 1 8 NPT cut into it, so the sensor can go into it. Why is this on a 14 150? 
because the PCV is a 14 by 150. So we take that out. We get the washer off of it because I'm gonna reuse this even though you're not supposed to, but I flip them to justify my actions. All right, and then we take that We put it on here and then we realized we should have tightened this down while the alternator was off because we can't torque it now, which is great. I have to fight a wrench in there and then give up and take all this stuff off and torque this down. But basically, that low dollar motorsport sensor is going to go right there. That goes into that water block is what I call it. Then it goes down through the oil air separator and basically gets its source from like right here in the timing cover. So any crankcase pressure this thing will monitor and then we can see like okay this thing started and it has one and a half psi of crankcase pressure crazy why are you snoring so loud so we can see you get a baseline of what the um crankcase pressure is in this thing kind of off the get-go and understand you know from there is this engine healthy all right cool and then in the ecu we can set a parameter that says if it goes above this amount then we need to take a look at something but the lower we can get this thing into vacuum the better because it will keep the um, piston ring seated on one side of the piston which is the bottom because when your combustion process happens it slams the ring down but then the piston starts to head back down into the block naturally that movement the ring is going to want to stick to the cylinder wall so it slides up and then you've got blow by pressure pushing on it so this ring is like fluttering on the piston up and down so if you can get a, a vacuum pulled on the crankcase that's even better in this situation i'm not going to run that 600 dollar pump to put a uh, vacuum on the crankcase this engine will make power without it so what we're going to do is just monitor it with this i've rambled long enough this is it so we got the belt on we got our crankcase pressure sensor on which i was actually pretty excited about and we have our starter and our wideband knock sensor that is all very very solid stuff this engine is coming together quite nicely and i'm very excited to go to the next step which is will be to fit the klm turbo manifold to that engine that i ordered um, i had to make a couple alterations to it and it's a really nice piece and i'm very excited to get it on the channel and document it because that engine doesn't look super exciting. The radium stuff's really nice, the low dollar sensors are really nice, but to see some big substantial hard parts on there, big turbo, big manifold hanging off of it would be really cool. So those videos are coming, I promise. It's not all just this boring building Honda stuff here. There'll be some cool stuff. If you've hung in here this long, I really appreciate you sticking it out with me. Thank you. Um, if you haven't liked and subscribed yet, subscribe. Um, I, I'm definitely bringing some more interesting stuff. We've got Braden's Evo back now. I'm going to go film that thing right now. Um, it's going to be pretty exciting here this summer, um, especially with COVID starting to die down. So I'm really excited for this year. I'm going to be working hard on this thing to get it done. And I thank everybody for all your support, your comments, your likes, dislikes even. You know, keep it coming. I appreciate it. It'll just help this channel grow. So thank you guys, and we'll see you next time when we both turbo to this thing.